I think we, we've heard a fair bit about the, the policy and the practice of it now. Um, and as I mentioned earlier on, there's then the actual, so the, the move to social, environmental, economic benefit. And what I'd like to do is introduce uh, two more speakers um, who are going to give uh, point examples. Um, and the first is uh, Michael Phillips, who manages the Australian e Government Technology Cluster, um, which is hosted here at NICTA. Um, and he's going to talk a little bit about that um, drawing together government and small business uh, to take the initiative to, to, to generate uh, tools and, and uh, access to data that benefits people and also creates commercial opportunities. And then that will be followed by Ricky Robinson, who's one of our researchers who, and, and business team members who works, uh, who's going to talk a little bit about what we're doing in, in the area of um, access to some of the uh, data in, in the geosciences area and how we're applying some advanced research techniques to actually extract uh, the relevant information, apply fusion, uh, and, and make that information more widely available for, for, again, a combination of environmental, social, and economic benefit. So, Michael, would you like to kick off? Thanks, Phil, and uh, thanks, John and, and Helen. So what I wanted to do in the next five minutes or so is talk a little bit about the e-government cluster, but then talk specifically about our involvement uh, in open data. Uh, a couple of slides. For those that don't know me, uh, Michael Phillips, I'm the manager of the e-government cluster. Um, so what is the e-government cluster, I hear you say? Doesn't matter, I'm going to tell you anyway. Um, it's an initiative uh, that was started about six years ago between uh, the ACT government and NICTA and its agenda is really to, like NICTA's, to enhance Australia's position uh, competitively, enhance our national wealth through innovative ICT, but in our case particularly applied to government. We see the end result of that as improved services, as less cost, uh, dollars and on the environment and more transparency, more openness which we've heard about already. And we do this by fostering ICT into government in three ways. First of all, building a community of interest. So we have approximately 100 members uh, in the cluster, Australian businesses, uh, some multinationals, and all government agencies as part of our interested stakeholders in advancing innovation in the public sector. The second thing we do is, as you'd expect, we inform. We run workshops, we have a newsletter, website, we use social media and so forth to promote the cause. And finally, we collaborate through primarily collaborative projects. Turning now to our involvement in Open Data, we're involved in three areas, three projects. First of all, we're leading the development of a white paper on open data uh, with NICTA, which will address the status of open data in Australia uh, and have uh, a detailed look at the technical aspects of open data. And that's planned to be released at the end of Q1. The next two projects are both collaborative projects. Uh, the first one is titled Mobile Canberra Pilot. And this is an innovative development of a mobile app accessing government open data in the ACT. The participants in that project are the ACT government and I'd like to acknowledge Mick Chisnell as our primary customer there. Uh, we've also partnered with uh, a small startup firm in the ACT, Imagine, who are doing the development. And we're tapping into NICTA's engineering support capability. The app uh, provides location-based services for visitors or Canberra residents. And what I'm showing you there are the primary screen and one of the subsidiary screens. So as you can see, the intention is that this app will provide users with the services that are in their immediate vicinity, wherever they may be. There's two innovative aspects of this uh, project. First of all, the app has been developed in HTML5. Uh, so it's device independent. And secondly, uh, it's accessing open data within the ACT environment. And we're coming across a number of challenges in doing that successfully. And, and a lot of the issues that we're coming across have already been covered previously. 
If anybody's interested in more detail on that, I'm happy to uh, demonstrate it after the session today. Uh, the third project is another aspect of open data, and if you consider open data as the sort of end product of, of government data assets, then we're also interested in the production of data. And we're about to kick off a second collaborative project uh, with our principal agency, the National Archives, to look at digital transition, and that is looking at the life cycle between a record is created and when it's disposed, either archived or destroyed, and what opportunities there are for innovative in innovation, uh, uh, automation along that life cycle to improve ultimately the production of government data. So that's uh, all I wanted to say this morning. Thanks very much for your attention and I'd like to now hand over to Dr Ricky Robinson who's going to talk about, as Phil said, a more detailed use of government data in the geothermal area. Thanks, Ricky. Thanks Michael. Um, yeah, so uh, my name's Ricky Robinson. Um, I'm from NICTA's Queensland lab. Um, I've been helping uh, Queensland roll out their new open data portal. So, um, so a, a lot of the challenges um, that, that Helen and John outlined are, are, are very apparent up there. We're, we're, we're dealing with those problems at the moment. Um, we've, got, we've got a portal up, it's got data sets on it, but uh, a lot of the, the, the difficult challenges are in the cultural changes. Um, So uh, this is qu quite similar to the slide that, um, that Helen put up before. This is our, our depiction of the, the open data pipeline, if you like, so from raw data all the way up to the end use of that data. Um, in, in honesty, uh, NICTA sort of works all along this pipeline, um, all the way from collection of that data to, uh, to actually applying some of our core capability uh, in uh, applications of that data. Um, I'm going to focus now on just one example of, uh, of what we're doing um, in, in the application space, which draws on our uh, core capabilities in machine learning, um, big data analytics. Um, that work uh, is in geothermal exploration. We draw on a number of data sets from Geoscience Australia, uh, the Department of MIT RE in South Australia, uh, and, a, and a range of other uh, range of other departments around the country. Um, we take all those uh, all that data and fuse it together in a in a single model, uh, in the hope that uh, we can uh, locate. Uh, geothermal targets and then characterize the value of those targets. Um, this is uh, probably the best example of where NICTA is using open data in, in anger. Um, but we do a, a, a range of other things as well, um, some of which um, Michael's already touched on. Now in, in, in most of the open data projects or projects where we use open data, uh, machine learning is absolutely key to what we do. Uh, data cleansing, big data analytics, uh, automatically categorizing uh, data um, and, and data fusion, which I've already touched on. And these images that we've got here are some visualizations of those uh, models, of those fused models. So this is um, radiometry data. This basically tells you the dosage of radiation that you're receiving if you're an individual standing in any particular point in Australia. So the brighter red, the more radiation you're, you're getting. So that's fused, fused data from uh, a whole range of sensors, a whole, whole range of data sets, um, radiation from, from the sun, radiation from the earth, and so on. Uh, if you've got any technical questions, really technical questions about machine learning and so on, we've got our machine learning research group leader, Bob Williamson, sit, sitting right here in front of me. Um, I'm sure you'd be glad to field any questions. So um, what's next? That's kind of what we're doing at the moment. Um, I, I'd like to sort of um, flag some complementary things. So um, where is open data potentially going in the future? And this is drawing on my experience from working with um, various university groups around the world. Um, 
and, uh, and so on. So just going to touch on a, on a few things here. So real time is becoming uh, a, a much bigger portion of the data that's out there. That's, that's a, a, a big problem uh, and a challenge and a huge opportunity as well. Um, uh, novel data sources. So one area that um, uh, uh, governments haven't picked up on yet but that the private sector has is uh, crowdsourcing um, data from, from citizens. I want to say that um, one of the reasons governments uh, want to put data out there is of course in the hope that it fosters uh, economic growth through um, the creation of startups, small businesses, etc. Um, uh, that's really great, but one of the challenges with that is that um, once data is out there, once it's open, it's open, right? So any multinational company from around the world, and I'm thinking Google here, um, they're often in a much better position to simply suck up the data that you put out there than a small business is um, uh, in creating a new app to consume that data. Uh, Google Transit uh, and, and the Google Transport um, layer in the Google Maps application is, is a perfect example of that, right? So it's great for citizens. You put that data out there um, and, and citizens get to use this great app now um, that's, that's got data in it for their location. Um, it's often quite hard for startups um, to, to compete with that. So. Um, to do well economically in the space, it's not just about putting the data out there. It, we've also got to foster really serious um, technology um, uh, innovation in that space. Um, Zillow is, a, is another great example. So they, they're a huge uh, $1.5 billion market cap company publicly listed in the US. That business is pretty much completely created off open data. Uh, they're a real estate market um, marketplace. Um, much like uh, RP data on the house, that kind of thing. Um, but the reason they're winning in this space is because they've combined that open data with really fantastic uh, data mining, machine learning technology. And so they're ahead of everyone else in that game. So that, that's crucial, right? We've got to do the tech and we've got to put the open data out there. Um, I think new protocols and platforms are going to emerge. Um, the web is the platform that we use for publishing data at the moment. Uh, and probably if you've um, listened to Tim Berners-Lee, you'd know about linked data. That's part of the story, but it's not going to be the whole story moving forward. And again, that's largely to do with uh, real-time data becoming more prevalent. Um, and it's, because it's also because of the enormous masses of data. There's something like five exabytes of data created every two days. Right, that's, that's enormous. Um, and so often data sets are so big that even with the NBN, it will take like a day. So one exabyte take, would take about a day to download over the NBN at 100 megabits per second. Um, so we're going to have to think about new models and architectures for processing this data. It might not be about downloading the data. Maybe you've got to push the algorithm to the data. So that's where cloud computing comes into all this. And finally, as I mentioned before, um, the crowd is largely untapped at the moment, and that's a huge resource. If you're an urban planner, plan, sorry, an urban planner in a city council, for example, wouldn't you just love to have uh, journey endpoint data? So, where are people going from and to in my city? Uh, Google are already capturing that data, okay, but governments are not, and they don't have access to that data either. So. Um, this sort of citizen uh, supplied or crowdsourced data is, is, is hugely valuable to governments. Uh, and finally, um, uh, one thing I'd really like to impress is we need to collect data about open data and the usage of that data, right? So at the moment, it's so difficult to figure out how people are using open data, what impact is this open data actually having, um, it's easy to count apps. It's not so easy to know how many people are using those apps, right? And so the little download counts on open data portals don't provide a, 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 a good picture um, because an app developer will often download that data set once, 
cache it, and who knows how many people are using it from there, right? Um, and also, there's a range of different open data events that take place, uh, gov camps, hackathons, etc. It'd be great to start tracking um, the outcomes of some of these things. Uh, how, many, how many apps get created, what companies get started. Um, and that's, that's my two cents worth today. Thank you very much. <laughs>